A player which has been getting a lot of disrespect lately is Thomas Partey and I feel like I need to talk about him. I feel like we as Gunners need to come together and talk about him because he is a quality player guys. I know he's regressed, I know he's not at the physical levels as he was before and I know his the technical levels aren't really there as well. But this is a top player, a guy that used to be, you know, one of our best central defensive midfielders, still probably is on his day. And I just thought this was quite a, a good time to talk about him, considering it's the international break. And this video I've just come across really of Zinchenko talking about Thomas Partey, Rodri, and just talking about all those sort of central defensive midfielders he has played with. And it's just quite interesting to see what he said, what his opinion was on Thomas Partey. And I know years have passed since this interview, but I feel like it's a great base to start today's video. So let's have a listen. You choose one. Thomas Partey. Oh, thank you very much. I had debate in my head. Yeah. Who is actually the best holder midfielder I ever played with? The debate was between Fernandinho, yeah. Thomas Partey, and Rodri. But Thomas Partey is, I don't know. But it's, 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 it's. Listen, I mean, like. <laughs> yeah, Rio's left the room. He's great. He's better than Rodri. He has everything. Rodri is absolutely fit so, so well for City system. If you take him out, it's different city. He's like the main detail there. Because for me, that city, this is the hardest, the toughest, the hardest position to play. It's the hardest. And Rodri fits, suits, suits there so well. Quality. Not over, overall Quality. qualities. You, yeah. all these... Interesting comments there from Alexander Zinchenko regarding Thomas Partey, essentially saying he's better than Rodri in the number six position. And I just think about the qualities that Thomas Partey gives this side good on the ball, really can be really, really good at anticipating as well in situations intercepting, which is needed at Arsenal. I know we don't have many transitions against us, but Thomas Partey can really read the game, can really read the game so, so well. He's also strong. Let's not, let's not lie, Thomas Partey has a physicality about him. Although his athleticism isn't there anymore, he's got that strength in the duels to come out of a duel as a winner. And I feel like all these things suit the way Arsenal want to play in that defensive midfield role. But yet, I still see a lot of Arsenal fans talking about Thomas Partey as somebody that has, has, has just completely, completely fair, fallen off. And I do feel like that's a bit unfair. So I'm just going to look at the three games that we have played with Thomas Partey this season. Of course, Wolves, of course, Aston Villa, of course, Brighton, all really, really different sort of propositions. And if we do look against, you know, Wolves' first game of the season, 90 minutes in, 7.3 rating, 33 out of 37 accurate passes, four key passes, six out of 10 ground jewels one, you know, some three clearances in there, three tackles. These are positive stats, guys. These are really positive stats. And I know a lot of you will be looking at Thomas Partey's performances this season and being like, OK, I watched him with my eyes. He's still awful. But let's let's think of him as a new player now. Thomas Partey is not the Thomas Partey of old. He hasn't got the athleticism anymore. And that's understandable. The amount of injuries he's had, just the Premier League's physicality, it's a lot, lot harder for him to adjust to the athletic side, athletic side of the game. But let's look at him as a as a pass first midfielder, as a covering sort of gaps sort of midfielder, a, a defensive midfielder. Let's look at him in games where there's not loads of transitions. Because games where there's lots of transitions, Thomas Partey struggles. And it's fine to have a player like that, but it maybe looks even worse because central defensive midfield is quite literally in the centre of the park. You cannot afford to be losing jewels and losing pace in that area of the pitch. But that's where Declan Rice comes in and is the athletic side to the game. But obviously, it's Brighton. Declan Rice didn't really play that role in um, that role, number eight role, to the best of his abilities. But when we do look at Thomas Partey's performance against Wolves, I do think it was really positive, to be honest, in terms of the balls he was giving out to Saka. So good, so quick on the free kick as well. Just some really, really positive stuff. And I know, goodness, I know Thomas Partey can be quite annoying, but he's a top player and he can be really important. Now let us move on to the game against Aston Villa. Of course, a different type of game. This is where I call it a transition heavy game. Same against, you know, Tottenham, a transition heavy game where we dominate the ball, the opposition just come bombing forward with pace, energy. This is the sort of game that it was against Aston Villa. Onana as well in the midfield. Tricky game. Onana's young, athletic, Thomas Partey towards the end of his career. He's getting to the end of, you know, performing to the highest levels we know he can perform to. But of course, 90 minutes played, the all, the, the all important goal as well is in there. 70 touches. 54 out of 61 accurate passes, 2 out of 5 accurate long balls. 
you know, I think this is where now the dual stats were really weighed against him. Two out of nine ground duels won. And this is why I get people's anger with Thomas Barta. I get he's not going to be the sort of player who can win those duels when it comes to more pace and power these days. But he's still a top player at the end of the day. He had two clearances, one interception, two tackles, dribble pass three times, of course. But again, when we needed him to perform, to score that goal, to, to swing balls out to Saka, technically he was on a really, really high level. Probably... The most calm midfielder out of the out of the other guys in there, Odegaard and Rice. I feel like against Aston Villa, on the ball, he was the best player from the midfield three. And, and I can say that with utmost confidence. But yes, yeah, so, so that performance may be off the ball. It wasn't great on the ball, really good. But that's what we're going to look at Thomas Partey like this season. And obviously the game against Brighton, a really, really difficult game. I feel like he played pretty well. I see a lot of Arsenal fans talking about Thomas Partey's performance against Brighton. But I think he was really, really good. Here we go, 6.9 rating, you know, 39 touches, 9 out of 25 accurate passes, 3 out of 5 accurate long balls, 3 out of 8 ground jewels, 1, not great, 1 out of 1 aerial jewels, 1, 2 block shots, 5 interceptions, 1 tackle, and 2 times dribble pass. So pretty decent stats all round, I'm not even going to lie, pretty decent stats in terms of he had to sit back, defend on his own in that midfield area. It was gonna always be tough, but he held his own, helped us keep the keep the point. I know he was a bit slow again. He's not as athletically on it as he used to be. But as I said, transition games, games where you need pace and energy, he hasn't quite got it anymore. And we've got to take that hit and just look at him as a you know covering space sort of midfielder, small spaces, covering small spaces and playing really good balls out to Saka and really good technically. That's what Thomas Partey can be. Can be quite cute as well with his turns on the ball, which is nice to see. But yeah. I think Thomas Partey's start to the season has been a 6.5 out of 10. I don't feel like it's been any worse or any better. And I feel like he's going to be so important this season. And just fingers crossed he stays fit. But anyway, Gunners, that's it for now. And until next time, peace.